All right, y'all, we are back in the building. And you know what? I was like, if we're talking to the cast of Love and Marriage DC, I mean, we got to talk to everybody. And so I had not had a chance yet to speak to the Tylers. What's going on, y'all? Hello. How are you? What's up, Richie? I'm good. I'm good. You know, uh, just getting through the work week and, and doing all the things. I'm glad y'all could take out some time today because I know y'all had a busy schedule, especially because it's the end of the yeah. season. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did. We did the news this morning. I just got off the Zoom. Has another one. Got another one coming up. About two hours. So yeah, one of the days. Get a little break. <laughs> I think that's going to be my first question. Then, like, I I feel like based on what I see, you guys have maximized the platform. I think in so many ways that is it's it's kind of like what i would give as a blueprint for what to do when you get on reality tv mm -hmm. can y'all tell me like how do y'all conceptualize what you need to do like how did that come into play because i know y'all were already big on social media but like i felt like y'all had a plan and y'all have executed like really well uh, I just say for me, I think building the Jane and the Rainer brand was always our goal. You know, we got our own individual stuff we do, but I think we, we want to show this union as a brand. So when, when you say I want to talk, it's to us. It's not me or it's just her. Unless she in her own world of hair and style and whatever she's doing, cool. But when we're talking in love and marriage and business with the Tyler, it's, it's always both of us. And that's what we try to promote. And that's what, like, for you, for the media, or any other podcast, blogger, it's always both of us. And we always had a unique story anyway. Um, the family dynamic itself. My mom moved in with us, um, like, five years ago, maybe? Seven years. Seven years. It went by so quick. <laughs> uh, and then we have, you know, three grown adult kids, um, one with a disability, which is not really... Um, you don't normally see that on reality TV, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so and you had a police officer, they don't currently retire, um, entrepreneur who's been, you know, into entrepreneurship for over 10 plus years. Um, so it was unique. Um, and I was glad that we were able to come on to the show, Love and Marriage DC, to display and show everyone out there in the world <laughs> watching, you know, how wonderful and amazing this family is. Hmm. You talked about something specific with Jamie retiring and Jamie, you and I had a conversation where we talked off camera and we sort of kind of, you kind of explained to me, you know, uh, that you wanted to follow a certain protocol for yourself with regards to the first season and how much you were able to share. How does it feel to now be on the other side of that? Because your story, and I told you back then, I thought it was super unique because not only are you black, but you were also a police officer. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you wore the uniform. So I feel like that's such a unique story at this particular time in history in general, especially in this country. So I would love for you to speak to that real quick. Yeah, we just, uh, season one, I knew they couldn't follow that that part of my day because I was, at that time, dealing with and the privacy around that with victims and the, and the suspects, that wasn't going to be on TV. And, you know, out of, re out of respect, I told Carlos and his staff and my cast, don't mention what I do until I retire. And I just didn't want that, that negative you know, image on my career. You know, I did 25, I didn't say, oh, I'm gonna be a reality TV star one day. And now I got a ruined reputation from, you know, one season of TV. So I just didn't want none of that till I got out the door. And once I did, I started pitching these scenes to the, to the producers. All right, let's talk about it. Cause George Floyd was pretty recent at that time. Mm -hmm. and, um, I knew how people felt about law enforcement. And I was like, nah, we, we can show another light of what, you know, law enforcement people actually really, really deal with and what I personally was dealing with. You know, I know we tell this a lot of times to our military officers, but, you know, I just want to say thank you for your service because my sister was also in law enforcement. So I totally 
understand a little bit of that. I mean, you obviously had way more time than she did because she had a whole different path. But um, I, I I can't even imagine it, listening to the stories as you as you guys spoke about them. Like I feel like I would have nightmares every night if I had to experience that. So I mean, all I can say is thank you because it helps keep us safe. Yeah, I appreciate. It. Yeah, I, I would say it's a it's a whole nother conversation, man. And, and from that scene. You know, I'm, I'm launching the Jamie Tyler Foundation where I'm going to focus on mental health of our first responders, our caregivers, our youth, because mental health is actually affecting everybody honey, in this day and age we live in. So look, be on the lookout for that. I'm going to do a big event in the community um, probably in like 30 days. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, I did see that post on Instagram. If you guys aren't following them, I will post their Instagrams down in the description of this video. All right, so listen, we got a couple of things that we need to discuss about what is going on with this cast at this point in time. I had to be honest, like I went on vacation for, for a minute and I was like, whoo, I am glad I did not have to review because it, it, I because I know y'all, you know what I'm saying? So this is a, it's a different situation for me that may be, you know, some other reviewers, which is fine, right? But, you know, for me, I'd be like, no, 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 no. Like, I didn't want to see y'all have to go through it like this. Where are you guys with the cast as it stands now? Because we know that the reunion was filmed, like, a while ago. Where do you guys get yeah, with everybody? Yeah. So right now, we're still friends with Joy and Clifton, of course. Um, we don't talk to Winter. Uh, we definitely don't talk to the Silvers anymore. Uh, we never really had a relationship with Sherelle and her husband, Black. Um, so it's pretty much just the petties, Joy and Clifton. What do you think is the issue, the real issue between Joy and Ashley? Like it seemed like a roller coaster the entire season, and that last episode, I was like, "Yes, y'all in the shop together, shopping, and then boom, it goes left." So, to me, and I think he can agree to this: that drama and that beef between Joy and Ashley went on too long. It just went on too long. I mean, you started in season, oops, it was the first part of season two. And then you go into the second half of season two with the same beef when they could have really had a conversation a long time ago to end it. There are other things that we could have been talking about on the show. There's a lot of scenes that we personally filmed. I'm sure the other cast members filmed as well. That was not a lot of drama, family oriented, that was cut out because of this stupid beef <laughs> with Joy and Ashley. And I think it, it was stupid to, to be dragged out that long. I, I think to keep it a hundred with you, Richie, and I feel like everybody's not made for reality TV. You know, I'm a mm -hmm. rookie. We all were rookies when we started, and what I learned from season one to season two is night and day. And you probably could attest to that from what you watch. I understand it's a it's a it's a science to it, and I feel like Ashley is hunkered down in her real life mindset of what she won't give on this TV. I'm just going to be me and that. But actually, like, you're beefing with your castmate is ruining the show. Like, I read the comments. Everybody knows. Jamie read in them comments. You got 90% of the fan base hates you and wants you off the show because of this behavior for now 14 weeks when you add the reunion. And what I saw, the feedback I got season one, I said, oh, we're going to change that narrative. And I felt like she just won't change the nerve. It's like, I don't like Joy and I'm going to fucking let it be known for 14 weeks. I don't like Joy for whatever reason. Off camera shit, on camera shit, it don't matter. Like, actually, at some point, you got to understand it's entertainment. We're filming a TV show. Move the fuck on. And then you got quick wound up for no reason. You know, everybody got their opinions about that wizard game. I know what I saw. I was right there. That shit was not how she blew it up to him to be. And I told him that the next day that shit wasn't like that. But he chose to, whatever reason, he chose to ride with her till the wheels fall off. And now they look crazy on TV, in my opinion. And 
it's no way I would embarrass me and her like that for 14 weeks. I would have said, I got to have a scene with Clifton, Raina, Jamie, and we're going to talk this shit out and move this goddamn storyline along. She she refused to do it because she just, I'm from Baltimore, hey, she, I'm big bad. Man. I'm the realest motherfucker on the show. And, I, and it just ruined the show. That's mm. my thing. We should have had some type of resolution a long time ago. There's no way we should have had this going all the way to the end of the season. I think that Deep Creek was a perfect time to actually have them two come together and have a conversation. I mean, just as a viewer, you know, uh, we talk about this with another show, you know, Potomac, and just the irony that those two shows are on at the same time and they're DMV based mm -hmm. with two casts that felt so divided. Mm -hmm. So as a reality TV viewer, what it began to feel like was, Oh Lord, my weekends are filled with two divided casts. And we as an audience, it's hard to watch because it's kind of like conflict without resolution. It leaves us like, you know, when you're watching a movie and you don't get no resolve, you be right. like, what? That I all this, all this time, and I ain't got nothing. So that's kind of how it felt to me. But I wanted to get you at you. You mentioned something, um, Jamie, that I wanted to really touch on the night at the game. Um, in that scene with Ashley and with uh, Clifton. OK, so from from what I saw on the screen, it looked like he leaned in for me as a man. I just felt like I probably would not have done that only because I know how it is going to be perceived whether there's a threat or not do i think that he was going to do anything i don't no. but i just knew how it could look for him what was your perspective on what you saw and what you felt because i think being there and just seeing it are two different things yeah 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 so good great question so you gotta imagine me right alicia quick clifton joy all in the suite Quick leaves out for whatever reason, probably because he knew she was going to do what she did. He leaves. So where we all were, we're in the middle of the suite. I'm sitting in the chair, chilling, right? Now. Everybody, they ain't on the table in front of me. When when Joy and Ashley come back in the gang, in the suite, all of, I think mine and probably Raina's mindset was they just squashed it. Mm -hmm. Thank God, let's move forward. Mm. And, for her to come in there, walk right up to him and give him that energy, we was like, oh, this guy be for TV. That's my thinking. I'm like, oh, this is the TV moment. You know what the moments when motherfuckers make a moment. I said, oh, she's still adding to the drama crew. Cool, but so he gonna play the game with her. And me sitting there, I didn't see the the lean was so not pronounced in real time because of the distance. You seeing an angle from a camera. Mm -hmm. He's on the table. She's like over here, they're not that close, but the angle you can't really tell. Mm. And because I understand reality TV, it's like you got a, a you got couples that's on the case. So the men and the women can talk. It ain't illegal to have a disagreement with a woman. So if she in his face, rah, 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 he could respond. Mm -hmm. And he did. And him nonchalantly said, I don't know what your problem. And you got a factor in it's loud, the game is on, they're playing music. We had trouble talking the whole thing because it was too loud in there. So mm. not that he probably did lean forward so she could hear what he said. It's loud. They had to block out all that. We had to keep stopping because of the music. And then, you know, they have the DJ come on, you know, when they take a break. So all that played a factor in like stopping, you know, the scenes. And then yeah. they say, OK, go back yeah. into it. As soon as the game come on, they're like, all right, it's up. Because mm -hmm. it's quiet. It so at that point, she's in there, rah, rah, rah. I'm like, OK, here go the bullshit for TV. And then we knew it was serious because after he did respond, she went to a whole nother level. So it was so bad that the yes, production man and uh, Alicia went off, was cursing Clifton out, calling them derogatory names. That's why she got fired. And it just, it was just a mess. It was so bad that the showrunner was like, "Run to help me, like get control of your friend." And that was so, like, I, I was shocked. Because like Jenny said, when we were in there waiting on them to finish that conversation out in the hallway, I thought that they were going to come in and it was done. <laughs> and 
And when she came in and she got in the Clifton phase, all I did was focus on Ashley. I didn't even really pay attention to Clifton. I just had my mouth open, as you can see, um, when the episode aired, I was just like, are you serious? Like, I'm saying to myself, are you serious right now? I just couldn't believe that this was happening at the Wizards game in a sweep. It was like Christmas 2.0. Like, I'm sure Joy was probably like, what is all she this about? It. She's like turned up in her room and, uh, and for Christmas. And uh, is this for TV or like you really want beef with me? Like, it's confusing because we know how this shit is with reality TV. For, for mid season finale, drama, suspense, I'm going to turn up. So we already knew that scene was going to be a mess. Now we back at the suite. And what you don't know, Richie, is Quick told Ashley that Clifton did not call her jealous. They cut it out though. He said that as soon as she said, so I'm jealous of your wife, Quick is being sarcastic, saying, baby, come on, baby, you know he ain't mean that. He wasn't saying it like that. That's they not what he did. And she was like, no, be quiet. So I'm jealous of your wife. And then we went back and forth for a few minutes until Joy said, you want to step out on the hall. That's what y'all don't see. And I even said it again because when we were sitting down, I was next to Ashley and Quick was next to where well, Quick and Ashley were sitting together. So Ashley was in between Quick and I. And I said, did you hear your husband? He said she didn't say that. And she just kept going and going and going nonstop. So she ignored quick and she ignored me. Which again leads me to say, oh, this is the TV bullshit. Okay, you want to make a moment. All right, go ahead and do your thing. So we not getting involved. When you say, why Jamie get, I understand. But, I just but no, it. I got involved. So when she said Jamie and Irina just stood there and watched the game, that was not true. Really? I executive produced the Brent. You know Brent. Brent looked at me when she was in Clifton's face and all this yelling. He looked at me and said, Raina, I need you to help me. Because I was saying it like, I can't believe this. He said, Raina, help me. I need you to help me. So I was like, okay, Ashley, come on, we got to go outside. So I was taking her out into the hallway and I was telling the producers and the cast, I said, somebody needs to call her husband. Somebody, where's your phone? Call quick, tell quick to come up here. Same time I'm trying to get her out in the hallway to calm her down. I'm saying, Ashley, while I'm walking her out to the hallway, I said, your husband is going to be upset. I said, you need to calm down. And she was like, I don't care. Da, 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 da. She said, are you motherfucking She was mad at me. I was like, Ashley, please calm down. I said, your husband is going to be furious. I said, just go out. I said, stay out in the hallway, calm down. And then finally she calmed down. But... I, we did do something. I'm the one that took her out in the hallway to calm her down. But then she got turned up again out in the hallway because she was mad at me. Alicia was mad at me. Some of your friends. And I'm like, hold up. So we were going to get into it. The producers had to like pull us apart. Not like we were physically fighting, but just like, no, Brandon, you come over here. Ashley, you go over here. Alicia, you over here. Then when we came back into the suite, Ashley was like, everybody get out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh, yeah. We took the mics off, and Jamie and I left. We left right behind Joy and Clifton. Was the game over? <laughs> no, it was still. I mean, I think it was a. Um, it was an after concert, so oh the game God. was over, and they had a concert. Okay. 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 Was, but okay. we didn't see anything. <laughs> we couldn't enjoy the game whatsoever. I heard y'all mention something about Alicia because I know that we hadn't seen her, and then Joy mentioned Alicia again in the finale. Some something happened with her. Yeah, Am I five. correct? She got fired. Yeah, she was using derogatory remarks, calling um Cliff. Yeah, tell them they so real over there. Tell her, ask her what happened to me. She, she got fired. And we didn't know until we were doing a scene with all cats at the bookstore where um Ashley had her book signing. And I was like, okay, all the cats are now in a group. It's time to have a conversation. And I was like, well, why is Alicia over there? And they were like, she was looking, she wasn't mic'd up or anything. So afterwards, I talked to one of the producers and the producers were like, well, we had a meeting after the sweet incident and they felt uncomfortable based off the, the words that she was using towards Clifton. And they, from that point on, she wasn't allowed to be mic'd up, participate in any filming. She can come to the event, of course, because it's Ashley's friend, but she was no longer able to be film, mic'd up, have conversations in a group setting or anything. That's why you don't see her anymore after the uh, sweep. Yeah, I, I, I did notice that. She came to Jamie's retirement party, but I don't even think they showed her for that. Yeah, they told her to move. Yeah. Like, you gotta move. And which is unfortunate because it's like, why would you even use those words? Yeah, like, uh, that's that's difficult. 
What what did you guys make of the thruple situation? Because that's been talked about. I did. I had a conversation with Carmen. Mm -hmm. Where did you feel like more of the energy for this thruple thing was coming from? Because for her, she seemed to feel very slighted because she felt like it was she tell she said to me that she felt like it was painting her in a negative light. How did you guys perceive it at the time? I didn't think well, I believe that to me looking at them during that time, I never saw Carmen with another man. When you look at their videos, their pictures, their reels or anything on social media, it was just them three. Now, I know Carmen said her man was with them too, but why wasn't he in the pictures? Why wasn't he in the videos? So people assume that it was something going on with the three. And then, you know, sometimes they would have little, uh, you know, they would do little sayings and say, you know, us hanging out, something like that. They would never say that they were a thruple or anything, but it just appeared to us looking at what was on social media. Say us, say you. No, I'm talking about the fans and everything. <laughs> <laughs> and Richie too, you can't even sit there and say <laughs> you didn't think. Listen, that. I see this. Okay, I'm when I met Carmen, I met her, and I met her with the guy, right? Mm -hmm. So I, when I saw the show, did there are two things that I can say are true. I I do remember seeing her being posted with Clifton, mm -hmm. so I can see how you as a married woman could say, hey, this could be to my, if you're saying this to your friend, this could look a certain type of way. I could see you saying that, right? Yeah, let's talk about but that. But then knowing Carmen the way that I, the way that I did socially, I'm just saying I had seen her with a guy. So for me, it was kind of like, and, and, well, maybe and they all- that, that doesn't mean anything. He's saying let's it with talk, a bunch of guys. Talk, Yeah, let's talk about it. So I know that Carmen said also that we've seen or met her boyfriend before. So let me tell you when we seen him. We went to a fight in D.C. It was a boxing match. Carmen came and said hello to us with, the, with her new boyfriend that she has now. She never introduced him because she was not in the- right space to do it she was fried <laughs> just saying, she was yeah but i don't want to put it out there yeah, she but she was. just wasn't in the right space to do it she never introduced him but i did see her with him i don't know who he is the second mm -hmm. time that i saw him she brought him to jamie's party and still it wasn't no official introduction because she wasn't in the right space i remember him taking her out the party because she was so messed up <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I didn't know that this was her boy. She claimed this is her boyfriend. But you got to think about it, Bridgie. They came, she came from Ready to Love. They were all on the same show. That's what I that figured the second, it all I, started I from. The second pick was Carmen. They had some type yeah. of connection. And then they started hanging out. So for me as a married woman, I'm looking at all these factors. I'm like, okay, I would yeah. never have a woman around my my boyfriend at the time that he had a connection with on another dating show number two she wasn't with a man yeah you know, i've never seen her with anybody and i'm sure 100 percent sure she still had feelings for cliff i don't care what nobody said you can't just come off a ready to love show a dating show have a connection with them and then all your feelings go away it doesn't work that easy Mm. And now, based on what we're seeing now, she was only befriending Joy because she wanted to still be in that space with him. Mm. She still wanted to be in a space with Clifton. So she befriends Joy, and Joy admitted, that's my best friend. We have a wonderful relationship. She's looked out for us. She's our business partner. She's mentioned that to me on numerous occasions. But when you see the final episode, she Carmen sits there on the couch and said, "Well, I'm not Joy's best friend, and I'm not Joy's business partner. But you was helping Joy with business. I remember because guess what? After the retirement party, when I started cleaning up and the cameras went down, she came up to me and said, "I guess you got a lot to tell Joy." I said, "I absolutely do." 
I called the producers. I said, I'm giving you two days for me to have a conversation with Joy and tell her what she said about her. Two days. I said, if y'all don't set up a scene, then I'm going to call her myself because I will not let this play out on TV and why and don't say anything. That wouldn't be a good friend. Mm. Just say, oh, you know, I'm just waiting for this thing to show on TV. No, I'm going to tell her exactly what Carmen said because evidently she's not the friend Joy thought she was. Mm. So I called Joy because the producers never set up a scene with us to have that talk on TV. And I said, I'm just going to let you know right now Carmen said X, Y, and Z at the retirement party. And I don't know how you want to handle it. I'm just telling you what was said. <laughs> I don't want you waiting till the show air because you need to take, take care of it now based off of what she shared in front of people who don't like you. <laughs> mm. Which was still what was really messed up. You know, even the producers were shocked when they heard Carmen talk about Joy. They were looking like, I know you lying. So it seems, it seems like everybody had a different idea of what that friendship was. And it sounds to me, based on my conversation with Carmen, that she had a completely different perspective. And, you know, she had a different, she has a different story in, that occurred for her in her mind from what I gathered in, when I, in, my, in my interview with her. Um, so it's interesting to hear what you guys saw in that moment and what you heard and what you felt, because I think a lot of times we watch the scene, but the energy in the room is something we can't tell through the screen always. Right. So it did look like and I had to ask them, like, what what is that relationship between the two of you? Yeah. Because it looks very different from how it's being described by you in this moment. Right. When I first met joy and clifton and they introduced carmen because we met carmen through them we was out at dinner and they talked about how great carmen was as a friend to them wow. and joy talked about how appreciative that she was you know in that circle did she and i was like wow they really like this girl you know like they like her i love her too you know yeah. but you can tell joy really cared about her and she thought that she was her best friend because the way she spoke about Carmen, you know, I was like, this is, you know, she really likes her. <laughs> you know, this is different because I know from the show how they became, you know, friends. So I was yeah. like, oh, okay, well, she liked it. I love it. But like you said, Joy thought that she was a, a, a good friend to her, but apparently that was not true. I have a different question for you guys, and I definitely want you to chime into this one, Jamie, because I feel like your name has come up quite a bit recently with a few of your castmates who, well, at least one or one, uh, that has quit the show. Um, what is your thought on the, um, you know, your castmates quitting, um, I guess, in the public forum in the way that they have um and then what do you make of your interactions socially with winter let me just go ahead and say it because that's what it is so for the record <laughs> with them quitting i'm i'm happy i i'm and i've never been more happy, to be honest with you um i feel like winter played her little villain game season one to get back on the show. And she she went away from that season two and became, you know, allies with, with the group. And and then you see her starting to go to the silver side and on social media. Now, this social media thing, if you notice, I know they want to say I like to argue with the women cats. Those women comment on my comments all the way down that feed. If I say something, they right over there on my, if I comment on somebody else's comment, they on my comment. Like they, they keep messing with me. So when I respond, now I'm saying, now I might, now you know, on King of Rain sends us 
Eclipse every every Thursday, Friday for the weekend. Yep. None of them post the, cl the clips with me because they look bad in every clip they send because they they the drama obviously. So when I send a clip and put a caption on it, it ain't come on my clip talking shit. And I respond and it's back go back go back. So I'm the bad guy again. So it's, for me, it's like don't keep picking at me and then when I respond, now you want to call your lawyer and I'm going to sue you and then defamation and shame it. Stop it. Like you you talk about her on every single every podcast you've been on. Something slick, some jab. You've been doing it since since this show started. She tired of it. I see it. I'm tired of it. I'm, I'm cheating. She's obsessed. So is it like enough is enough. If, if we're going to play this game where you could talk about me, I'm talking about you, then just play the game. Don't don't start talking about, oh, I'm going to sue you because you you said this. But say that like, once you're on my post fucking with me. Ashley, you're on my post fucking with me. And then when I respond, it's it's like, how low can you go? Who's going to go to low? I got so much shit I could say that would destroy them that I'm not. And that's, and that's I get to that point. But trust me, they ain't the realest and the most honest like they want to get y'all on Twitter. It's some shit that was said and done that they ain't talking about for a reason. Hmm. Yeah, how they got to bring up, oh, that wasn't shown conveniently. You left that up. Yeah, there's some shit they left out saving their ass, too. I'm going to leave it at that. Um, My question then for you both is if you guys were to come back and do another season, um who would you want to have on the show like who is is there like a couple that you feel like would bring something fresh and dynamic to the group since you know we definitely it seems like lost a cast member or i don't know how many others but at least it sounds like we're losing you know. them every week but i think um, Look, go ahead. <laughs> Let me just say this, Rich. I don't feel, and you'll see in the reunion, Winter really is just sitting there. She really, she got her little spat with Yusha. That's it. She has no, you could see she was not relevant this season or the reunion. She literally was just, like the scenes you watch, you recap the show, you can see the scenes she's in. They're like, nah, I didn't need that scene. We got scenes with Jason. We got scenes with the family, me, her, like that could have replaced them scenes, bro. But I know she's part of the show, so it is what it is. I think, I think Ashley, she's good for reality TV for obvious reasons. But I don't feel like she really truly understands the science of reality TV. And I said that earlier, because there's no way in hell something in her brain should have said. That's enough drama for now. This this resolve this mm -hmm. and get to the next drama and then resolve that. She just she just kept on and kept on and it was so high schoolish that it did, it just didn't make no sense. As as fifty year old people sitting right here like I would never argue about this shit in real life. It, it makes no sense. But TV, I get the entertainment. You got it. You can do it, but then move the fuck on. And you recap all these shows, so you know how this game works. Like. The girls are fighting, resolve it. Here they go again, resolve it. So I think if you bring another couple on, you know, or two, I think it's need to be two more couples. And uh, with with everybody's input, the silly name, and they gotta understand the space we right. We're representing Washington, DC. This don't don't get in here and burst the city. We we're we're really from here. And I feel like this season and burst DC. My opinion. I think the mm. Silva should have spoken about their marriage. I mean, we're we're yeah. hearing now at the at the reunion that she's fifty percent happy and fifty percent ready to leave. <laughs> I think that they should have brought that up while we were filming. I mm. mean, Jamie and I we've talked about everything in our marriage. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We haven't left anything out. Everything, and I think that all the drama where her and Joy. They could have just ended that a long time ago. Like mm -hmm. now you bring up your marriage. I think that would have been something that a great topic to talk about throughout the season. So I'm Jamie, I'm assuming you will be um there as well, but I'm just looking into the future at May 12th because 
you, all the ladies at least, are slated to be on the stage Except with. Winter. You so know, she Carlos, Carlos took her off. Oh, he did. Yeah, her name is no longer on his um, Instagram. She's gone. If you look at his Instagram, it's only me, Ashley, and um, Joy. He took her her off. She's gone. I did not know that. What? You already see that? Yeah, no, I mean, go I mean. Look on his page. Go look on his page real quick. It's gone. Let me go look. Let me go look real quick. Go look on his Instagram. It's just me. I'll, it's just because we have individual flights. So it's me. Ashley. I remember. You don't see Winter. Hold on, let me go look now. Y'all done told me something new. She's gone. Now, it could be numerous reasons why. She went on a whole tour of bashing the company, Kingdom Rain, Carlos King, the production, you know, everybody. And, you know. Wow. So, uh, well, that answers a part of the question. Yeah, I see yours. I see the individual ones now, no. and I do not see hers. What? What? How? How do you anticipate that going? Have you? Because you have y'all run into each other? Because I know DC is. Yeah. It's small when it comes. It's big, but it's it's small when it comes to like. And we live in the same area, but I have not seen Ashley. I haven't seen Quick. Well, no, we did see Quick. We mm -hmm. saw Quick probably like a month ago. Yeah. We were actually in a week together. Yeah, we spoke we at a uh, right. soccer game or something. Yeah, our issue not with Quick. Hers never was with Quick. Quick was taking up for his wife for that false shit at that game, and that's the, that's where we all are. And I we speak on the reunion. You'll see. I said I don't have no problem with him. I said, but he I don't like his wife. Probably never will again. He rides with her obviously for good, bad, and ugly, right or wrong. We don't have no relationship either. I spoke to Carlos because when he originally put it out there, I was like, uh, I don't know how this is going to work. And then he put the That's flyer. That's what I said. Right. I said, <laughs> then he, he put the flyer out. And I'm like, oh, my God. Like, he's really going to do this. So we wasn't really sharing the information or the post. And he called. And he was like, what's going on? Like, y'all not sharing the flyer? You know, what's what's up with y'all? Y'all not trying to do this? You know? And I said, well, Carlos, I don't feel comfortable. I said, what's going on right now? And this is during the time when I had the conversation with Carlos when went to put out that false information about me sleeping with some guy. And it was a big blow up. I mean, we had our attorneys involved. Winter had her attorneys involved. So it was kind of messy. And I was like, I don't feel comfortable going on stage with Winter and Ashley, you know, them two going back and forth on social media. I said, I don't think that's a good look. I said, I don't need that type of energy. It's Mother's Day. I don't want to act a fool on stage. We shouldn't be doing this, period. And he was like, no, we're not going to even talk about the show. You know, I have a plan. It's going to go well, but I don't know how we're going to avoid talking about the show. Especially when you open it up to people who are there, the guests. They're going to ask questions. So I was like, well, how is he going to avoid questions or talking about the show? Like, what does he have up his sleeves? But he was like, I'm Carlos King. I got it under control. You'll be fine. Everybody's going to be fine. I want to give you guys your flowers now. It's Mother's Day. We're grown. We can, <laughs> you know, <let's laughs> but every day I'm thinking about it. I'm like, I don't know if I want to do this because every day on social media is something. I actually tweeting something about the cast. Every Saturday after the show, she's on a a rank on Twitter. So I'm like, you know what, how am I? And then, what is it, May 12th? I think the last episode for the reunion is what, May, the first week of uh, May? I think it's actually next week, the 27th. Yeah, so all the episodes have been aired by then, and then we got to sit on stage together and do what? Yeah, what we we're, the, we're the puppets now. I yeah. told him, I said, it's going to be a reunion part four. I said, you know that. I said it's gonna be a reunion part four. And I don't want to do this. You know, I just don't feel comfortable. I don't yeah. have to. <laughs> yeah. That's the unfortunate thing because I do feel like um it, number one, you know, I, I just I love that we have stuff here in DC that's being filmed mm -hmm. with people who actually live here. So that's why for me. I feel like I have like this vested interest in y'all just making the most out of this opportunity because I know it, I know what it can do. Mm -hmm. 
if you guys can get on the same page, which is really honestly my hope because I, 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 I do love y'all. I, I, I want y'all to know that. And I have come to really respect all of y'all in so many different ways. So it's sad to me, you know what I'm saying? That, you know, it that you even feel that you can't, you wouldn't even want to go to something like that. Yeah, I don't feel I, but you, you know, people not on, on Twitter and on social media. I'm not, I mean, I, I, two, two interviews and called me bitches. Fuck Raina. Mm -hmm. She's a bitch. Like this week. Like, how do I supposed to get back with somebody like that? Like, how do we sit down and result? Like, you called me bitches on reunion. On two interviews recently, you said, fuck that bitch. I, listen, I can see how you feel. <laughs> I can see how you feel. I, I, I can't hear from somebody like that. Like, my friends, we don't act like that. We don't talk to each other. I've never, I haven't had these problems since high school. Yeah. I'm over I'm 50 years old and I'm going through this foolishness. No, yeah. I post here yeah, peace. That's, that's <laughs> when, you, when you do these shows, of course everybody's going to have shady moments. And um, that episode where, the, where they were at Joy's birthday, that's, that was a great episode because it was fun, shade, mm -hmm. just talking yeah. shit. Mm -hmm. The shit that goes down on Twitter and Instagram and on these YouTube interviews Woo. is cutting to the to the white meat for the for the people she talking about. You can't we come you can't come back from that. I know I'm not. I don't give a fuck if I ever talk to that girl again in my life. That's how I feel. <sighs> okay. I tried. Uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't want, but it, 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 you do know like for real I'm I'm being so serious when I when I say I I care y'all are people that i care about so that's why i i, I had to put i had to try yeah. um <laughs> what do y'all have coming up next i know jamie you have the foundation i've seen now i don't know if i'm supposed to say this so y'all have to tell me if i can't mm -hmm. but i could have swore i saw something going on with y'all and i'll be sure and some type of project is that now, did, oh, yes. did i see that did or not about that you um, did say it, but can you speak on that? I I don't know. He he might be talking about we we we're working on something together. Okay, okay. It's definitely it can't be discussed yet, mm -hmm. but we support everything he's doing with his um transplant stuff he got going on. So, but this is outside of that. Yeah, we do got something going on. And then I got the foundation surrounding mental health that we're going to launch. It's going to be May nineteenth on a Sunday. May nineteenth. Okay. Um, my birthday is coming up. You free on? I got two events that week: the twenty fourth and the twenty seventh. You free? You know, you're always welcome. And uh, let me know, y'all know I'm trying to I'm trying to get out the house a little bit more. So you're an introvert. I am. <laughs> <laughs> I am. I admit it. Believe it or not, I am too. Also, I am. I just, I just filmed the um, TV series. I'm in an episode. It'll be out later this year. Okay. Uh, speaking role. So for my cast, we like to call it two guys. We talking now. So she about to get crazy over here. I've been talking. Listen, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get some stuff on Tubi myself. So I. <laughs> so the check, okay. I'm, 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 uh, did the check cash. Okay. Yeah, did the check yeah, cash. Like, watch you're always trying to take shots. And, you're not even, that's, and not that's the stuff we're talking about. Like, okay, you're doing, and you're taking acting classes, you're doing things. Great, great for you. But you don't have to say, well, they too be actors. Like, I've been in LA filming a series that I got paid for. I haven't seen her talk in anything or seen anything on TV where Ashley's face on this besides Love and Marriage DC. I've been in plays. Also, she was trying to do the same play that I couldn't do at once. <laughs> They told me that she tried to audition for my role because I couldn't do it again. It was Grease. Remember, I did a play called Grease with a oh, side yeah, of yeah, yeah. So we, I did five uh, show, uh, sold out shows, and then they wanted to do it again because it was so great. Everybody was saying, y'all need to do it again. So when the time came, I told them, I said, well, I'm busy. I'm not going to be able to do it this time. They said, well, can you suggest somebody can do your, take your role? And I suggested my girlfriend, um, Ivory. She's very outspoken, lively. She can host real good. 
And then one of the uh, producers, they called me and said, well, your girl Ashley came to audition for your role, but we denied it because she wasn't good. <laughs> That's one of my favorite musicals, too. Um, I'm mad. I'm mad. I miss she was terrible. They said, uh, no. Well, they said, we'll call you if something else come up. But I'm a C or D list actress. But you was trying to take one of the roles that I had. That I sold out five times. <laughs> will Will you be doing more acting? And what is going on with the with the wig with the wig line? So the wig line, we're still adding new styles. We're actually doing a new an event with Jamie. He has a men, uh, mental health uh, event coming up on May 13th. Yeah, actually, yeah. no, they left the day before Mother's Day. So okay. uh, we're doing it's like a fashion show. So we're going to provide um, wigs for the models. For the fashion okay. show, um, I'm also doing a skincare uh, collaboration. Well, I know skincare. I did a couple of videos too for that. I've seen them. I've seen. I've seen you uh, getting getting in on that. Get ready with me. Yeah, and then we're doing wet ambassadors also for ten, which is a dentist. Um, <laughs> Y'all need to slap uh, me. Information. I want to get Invisalign. <laughs> yes, we got Invisalign, but I'm being hard headed. I don't wear mine as much as he does. You got. You got to wear them every day. I know it's hard. You, He's taking them in and out every time you eat and drink. It's so I know, fun. I know, but that is be like, oh, it looks it's so good. Perfect. And then I'm doing luxury consignment pop ups too. Um, we just did one last week. Um, it was our third third event, so we're doing another one coming up in June. We try to space them out two months apart. Always sold out. Always a great turnout. Great vendors, like 26 vendors. So it's getting bigger and bigger every time we do it. We started off with like 10 vendors when we first started. Wow. Now we had 27 vendors. Um, so it's, I like working on that. I like having the small businesses coming together, the ladies shopping and, you know, having a good time. Well, y'all are booked and busy. I'm super excited for everything that y'all have coming up. Um, thank you for taking out the time to speak with me today about the show. I could not let the season go by without trying to talk to everybody. Um, I always think it's good to get the perspectives of the people who were there in the scene, especially if I, if I'm going to be talking about you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but with that being said, listen, can y'all tell people where to follow y'all? Cause it's always good to hear from your voices. Well, I am on Instagram. I no longer have Facebook. So I am the real Irena Tyler on Instagram. Yeah, so I'm Jamie underscore Tyler three on Twitter, Instagram, um, TikTok is Jamie and Irena Tyler. YouTube is a day in the life for the Tylers. Which oh, running I took day. your advice and I started, yeah, they sending that money now. Yeah. Oh, thank you. As a matter of fact, <laughs> if you have permission to share this, I need some content. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you thank do. You. My thing is like I want to be the type of friend that that and, and and person that helps get money. Like that's that's me. Like that's what I want to, that's the type of legacy I want to leave. So however I can help, and you know, y'all always know how to reach me. Yeah, right? I'm, very I'm an expert in it. I'm mm -hmm. learning. And my last one, I just made a new page, the Jamie Tyler Foundation. So I'm going to be updating that with all the stuff we're doing over there. All right. All right. Well, listen, Sky Squad, there you have it. The Tylers, we are closing out Love and Marriage DC this current season. Be sure to tune in to part two of the reunion coming up this weekend, Saturday night, 8 p.m. Do not go anywhere. Be seated for own. OK. And then part three will be next weekend on the 27th. Be sure to tap in. With that being said, Sky Squad, I'll catch you all in the next video. Thank you. Bye, y'all.